Hello and welcome back. I'm David Bianco. So it's good to see some positive topics being covered today. 45 RPM audiophile Michael Ludwig did an interview with Chad Kaysen from Acoustic Sound slash Analog Productions today. And it was really interesting. I'd like to also talk about the video that they released today because I've got a perspective on it from manufacturing. And I'd like to share that with you next on the sound of Safe and Sound, Texas. And then those test pressings will come to Chad's office. We'll just listen to the same thing over and over for days, uh, comparing it to every different version we can find. I get the original album. We'll have two different turntables and I can flip back and forth. They want to hear their favorite album sounding better than they've ever heard it before. And you know why I know that's what they want? It's because that's what I want. Analog is known for its warmth, its richness, its smoothness. And that's what we want. We want it to sound like nice analog tape. Hello and welcome back. David Bianco with you again. So today, uh, July 24th, we have the release of a video on YouTube from Acoustic Sounds called Behind the Scenes. Uh, and uh, in the description, it says, from mastering to distribution, there is no company in the world quite like Acoustic Sounds. Get an inside look at each process that goes into creating the best sounding vinyl. So this was kind of launched a bit in terms of visibility through 45 RPM audio file YouTube channel and Michael Ludwig. Uh, which was another uh, great uh, get that he got to, to get an interview with Chad Kasem. But I will say Chad is makes himself available, so um, uh, he's out there. And uh, he's proud of what he has done, obviously. So I've read some things. Obviously, there are people who are really cynical and say this is a PR thing. And I, I'm sure, yeah, there is an element of public relations. I don't know that this was uh, put together quickly in uh, the light of everything that's happened the last 10 days or so with the MoFi situation. I have no idea, but it is what it is. It does explain the work that they do in their facilities in Salina, Kansas. Uh, kind of like a little city, it looks like to me. They've got, uh, they've got some strategic areas there in the city. I think they do some work from and um, the thing that strikes me is uh, more related to my work background than my hobby background. Having been in manufacturing for over 45 years now, having been uh, in quality as well in that journey and knowing what it takes to make production processes, uh, sourcing of materials, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, the quality of the product and its longevity, although I wasn't obviously involved with making records, uh, there's quite a bit to it. And the one thing I, I have to say just right out of the box here is Chad understands a fundamental that I frankly think most businesses in the U.S. especially have forgotten. And that is the more processes that you control and you own, the better off you're going to be in the long run. See, there's been kind of an outsourcing mentality uh, across uh, the business world for years and years and years. Uh, we know about it, shipping jobs off to Mexico, shipping jobs off to China, whatever you want to talk about, you've heard it uh, put different ways. But at the end of the day, when you do these handoffs, what you do is create a dependency. And unfortunately, processes can let you down. People can let you down. Timing can let you down. We saw this tremendously with COVID. The supply chain was totally wrecked, right? It still really hasn't come back to fruition. We see this when uh, there's a major industry that has a calamity that occurs. And, and uh, we saw it with the FDA and, and with them shutting down one of the uh, formula companies uh, earlier this year. Uh, so my point is we see it and we know it's there. And fundamentally, uh, my focus of what I want to talk about is the fact that Chad is in fact bringing all of those processes into his control within his organization. 
So the pieces to the puzzle that he puts together, A, he controls, B, he designs, C, he gets the feedback from customers, and D, he can improve it. Uh, the packaging of the records and seam splits that's talked about is a great example. Seam splits is the number one complaint. It happens a lot in transit. People are in such a hurry and you know they wanna get the stuff just delivered so they can move on. We do all that work, spend all that money, all that time and have a beautiful piece only to be damaged on the way from us to them? No, man, we had to figure that one out. We need to design a box that's gorilla proof, that's idiot proof. Might seem like a small thing, but it really isn't. When I hear someone's getting a packaging engineer involved, I know they get it because they are looking for a solution to a problem. They are looking for how to avoid certain things from happening. And that's what it takes. That's the kind of investment it takes. Now, you could go out and try different things in the market that's already out there and do trial and error. Sure. But essentially, our customers are ending, ending up doing the trial and error then. And I think Chad figures, I don't want that. I want a solution that I can control and I can count on and that I can be confident in. So, yes, is there certainly any amount of PR when somebody does a video like this? Absolutely. But there's also pride here. There's also what I see is a lot of investment in the work, the content, the facilities, and a real strong belief and thanks to the people. You don't see that a lot in business these days. Uh, Chad in the interview today was over the top several times about the people that have got him there and kept him there. Um, he says, I'm no engineer. I got to count on these guys, he, you know, but, but he has the ear at the end of the day to make these calls. Uh, and, and I have no doubt uh, in one portion they say, you know, if it takes us redoing it over and over, it's going to be done that way until Chad's satisfied. You know, I believe he has so much skin in the game that that really is the bottom line. And isn't that refreshing, given what we've been through, okay? I think it is. Now, are they perfect? Nobody's perfect. And I don't think Chad would begin to say that they are. But I also know that when he sees a problem, he goes after it. I also know that he's trying to be cutting edge, no pun intended, and that he's trying to always give the best to the customer. And that is really what most companies always say they want to do and they try to do. But part of delivering a, a product is delivering information, not just the end product. And I think that that's, again, where we have this other situation going on, where really there hasn't been full information. And customers may have been purchasing based on some assumptions. Uh, so I would say that I will tell you that in the video that he did with uh, 45 RPM Michael uh, Ludwig, he did talk of some pressings where they maybe had a track or two that they had to do something different with. And, and they did have situations as rare as they were. Are they as transparent about all those minutia de details as uh, I would think they might need to be or would want to be? Probably not. Uh, I think if you called them and asked them, they would tell you. That's a difference. I do believe they would tell you. But I do believe that even in, even in the case of, of their production and, and the quality records pressing QRP and what they do, I think those areas definitely still can give a little more detail. Uh, there was a story where they actually had put a sticker on uh, where it was from analog master tape and they realized they'd made a mistake because of what really was in the chain and they pulled everything in inventory and relabeled it and only had a few get out and notified people. So, I mean, mistakes are made, but they recognized uh, the error of that way, which was unintentional uh, because they've gotten used to always putting it out in that fashion. And in this one uh, case, they had a minor deviation uh, from having a true uh, analog source. So, can they be a little more transparent maybe on the website? Yeah, stickers on the... Uh, Jacket, yeah, I mean, to me, that's nice, but at the same time, I would rather have something that came with the album that might not get uh, away from it. So, uh, again, as much transparency written as possible, but at the end of the day, when this is looked at cynically, 
I guess you can take that approach. Uh, for me, I really appreciated the fact that they are taking control of so many things, plating, uh, the, the, the materials that are used uh, in, in the process. They also gain one thing, and that is they get cycle time reduction in the overall process of getting records into our hands. When they can do something internally and not have to send it off and wait for it to come back, and then see if the quality is okay and then send it back or whatever, they are reducing time because they can react. And I think that's a key element. And the other piece of, to me is the care that goes into that is different. You see, the one thing I sense in that whole process of that business is passion. And passion is an element that can't be put into a spreadsheet for your books. And it can't be measured by just website information. It's something intrinsically that happens within the organization. You could see it in the people that were interviewed and you could see it in the fact that, you know, most of us, when we watch that, we think, man, that would be a cool place to work. And Chad would be a cool guy to work for because he's very straight up. And I think that that's what we need in the industry. So that's my take on that as always. Appreciate if you would subscribe, press that subscribe button. If you like the video, press the like as well. And if you have comments, please leave those, any other topics you'd like to see covered. But for now, I'll say so long. This is David Bianco from the Sound of Safe and Sound, Texas. Goodbye, everybody.